friends and welcome to today's acrylic painting lesson. Today I am I am quite ill as, as you can probably hear in my voice. Luckily when I filmed today's lesson I wasn't sick so so it sounds much better than than I currently do but but I apologize if this little intro isn't the energy level that, that's normally brought. With that said today we are going to be painting this nice little northern light scene. I really love painting it because I love painting light and to do that much of it in the sky and then down in the reflection was a really nice thing to do. As per usual, if you'd like help with the drawing process of it, then there is a digital sketch up over on Patreon to help you with just that and you can also find the full uncut hour long version over on Patreon as well. So that's that's what I think I need to say in this intro. I'm, I'm struggling a little bit, but um, also, also I suppose the book sale is still on for nine or ten more days. I'm not, I'm not really sure what day it is, but um, that's still on. All of the books are 25% off, and I suppose, I suppose most importantly, if you need any help, please let me know. Leave a, a comment in the comment section. I'm always here, and I'm happy to help if I'm not, if I'm not in bed sleeping. So we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> but um, I hope you enjoy today's lesson and let's jump into it. Again, I'm in much better health in it and you don't, you don't have to listen to me speak like this through all of it. So uh, <laughs> let's do this. I'm going to begin here today by taking my larger square headed brush, dipping the tip of it in some water, making sure that it's nice and damp to extend the wet life of my paint and help me drag my paint tip farther. Then I'm going to grab a little bit of titanium white, I'm going to grab a hint of primary blue, and I'm going to grab about an equal mixture to all of that in Mars black. I'm going to create a nice dark grayish blue for our sky. This is going to be a night sky, and it's important that we get something nice and thick for this first layer. And as you can see, I'm moving around my trees a little bit, but I'm not being too cautious or too careful with it. I'm not really worried because we can always go back in and, and redraw them. But it's nice to have an idea of where they are. That's just what I'm trying to keep right here. Now I'm leaving a little bit of an area under here open. We'll add a little bit of light to that. So now I'll head back to my palette. I'll create a slightly brighter mixture than that for that brighter bottom area. So I'm taking primary blue, titanium white, and now some Mars black. And we'll throw this into the bottom. I'm using the sharp edge of my square headed brush to line the mountain there. And then I'll blend upwards into the rest of it. Just like that. So here we are making a slight sacrifice and we're making our sky darker, we're covering that up, we'll go back in, we'll redraw, we'll repaint it, but we have these larger bases still here to help us when that happens. But now I'm going to take a little bit of extra Mars Black, work that into our mixture, and I'm going to apply this new mixture to the top of our sky, blend it down the left and the right hand side, and create a little bit of a vignette and gradient the eye innately goes to the brightest point in any picture or painting. So if you make the edges a little bit darker, you draw the viewer's eye into the middle and hopefully you keep them in the painting rather than have the eye wandering off into the wall or the frame. Then I'm going to take a bit of that darker pigment that we used in the sky. And I'm going to work this into the bottom of the mountain and then blend that up. And this is going to occur because all of the light's happening from behind the mountain. So it's lighting the edges, but then as you get farther down the mountain, the top of the mountain casts a shadow, and this area doesn't receive the light that the top of the mountain does. So we're creating some depth in our mountain by wrapping light around it. Now here I'm doing lots of little strokes to create this gradient, create a Nice transition between the two. And I like the little strokes because occasionally they can show through in these larger areas and it almost looks like little paths that run up your mountains. Now it's time to add in those dark pigments again and I just about ran out of mine so I'm mixing up 
a little bit more right beside my previous mixture. Made that very quickly that time. See, once you practice, once you do it a couple times, it gets a lot easier. And I'm going to start from the bottom and then work my way up. I'm working in little taps, creating these little pathways, divots, blending a lot of the hard edges and just creating smaller hard edges. There we go. I'm going to take my medium sized square headed brush, make it nice and damp. I'm going to grab a good a bit of this primary yellow, I'm going to grab a good bit of this primary blue and mix them together to make a green as you can see right here. Then I'm going to make it a little bit more thick and a little bit brighter by throwing in some extra titanium white. And this will be our first color for the lights in our sky. Now I'm going to take some extra water, thin this paint down a little bit because I want it to be semi-transparent and I want it to show through portions of the sky. Then at the back here I'm going to make lots of little vertical impressions in the canvas and lead them in a string up into the foreground. And as I do this, I'm applying slightly more pressure as I get closer and closer to us. And I'm allowing the markings to get bigger and bigger, longer and longer. And the idea here is that as they get closer to us in the sky, they get brighter and larger and much more noticeable. So here I'm combining them once in a while and then I'm leaving openings as well. And this is going to make it much more interesting and give it a bit of life as well. Now I'm going to take more of that green. I'm going to take a hint more titanium white, build it up. Titanium white is a very thick pigment so it'll make it much more noticeable on the canvas and then I'm going to go and I'm going to throw in some extra light starting this time in the foreground and I'll work my way backwards. We want it to be the brightest as it's closest to us and then to get darker and blend into the sky as it gets farther away. Now I'm going to start adding a pink to the Aurora Borealis. So I'm going to take a primary red here I'm going to take a hint of primary blue just to give it a little bit of purple and match it with the blue sky well. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of titanium white as well. From there, I'm going to make sure my brush is nice and damp. And then right above our light here, I'm going to start a second strand of light. This one is going to be less prominent. So I'm not going to apply as many layers and I'm not going to make it as thick. I'm applying a very minimal amount of pressure to make it so transparent. But I'm going to have it blend to a point with our green. So I'm blending down into the green occasionally, but I'm also leaving little openings. And this is going to give it some extra color and dimension. Now we're going to continue working on our mountain area. I'm going to take my medium sized round headed brush, make sure that it is nice and damp, and I'm going to head over and I'm going to recreate this light blue that we used for the horizon in the sky. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to apply it on the base of the mountain in little circular strokes. So I'm just rotating my brush as I move throughout this area and I'm essentially creating a mist down here at the base of the mountain which will be a nice little home for a forest of pine trees. I'm going to take my smaller square headed brush, make sure that it's nice and damp. I'm going to head over, grab some Mars black, a little bit of primary blue here, some titanium white and we're mixing up a color for our pine trees in the background, but they're not going to be a pure green. They're going to be more blue because of the reflective color of the sky and everything else. So once I have a nice dark silhouetted bluish green like this, 
I'm going to head in and make a lot of little vertical strokes to create the impression of pine trees just sticking up here in the background. I'm starting from the bottom. I'm raising my brush. As I apply it, I'm relieving pressure with my brush so my impression gets smaller and smaller and looks more triangular. Now, as we know, ice can be either very reflective or not reflective at all. And I think ours is going to be right in between. We'll do semi-reflective, but not too reflective. So for my reflection, I'm going to take my smaller square-headed brush, make sure that it's nice and damp. I'm going to start with a reflection of our mountain. So I'm going to take some titanium white, mix it in with the color of our ice. I'm going to follow the edge from there. I'm just going to create the outline to begin with. And then I'll do a little bit of blending the highlights up into the ice. Now from there, I'm going to work in a little bit of the reflection of our lighting in the sky here. So I'm going to mix up some more of that color, take some primary blue, primary yellow, and again, a good amount of titanium white to make it nice and thick. I'm mixing it on top of our previous mixture to make sure I have a nice similar color, make sure it matches. And then yet again, I'm going to start in the farthest area and then start to work forward. Now the ice here on my canvas is still nice and wet. So everything's blending into it very softly. We're going to take our medium sized square headed brush and we're going to create some darker snow for the distance. So I'm going to start with some primary blue. I'm going to take a little bit of Mars black and I'm going to take a little bit of titanium white and create something fairly neutral to begin with. And I'll just make it a little bit darker by throwing in some extra Mars black until we have something we feel is fitting for the distant snow. Here I'm using these colors, these darker blues as kind of a reference. I want them to be similar, but in the end a little bit brighter than what we used for the ice and all of that. So here you can see I'm using the top of the brush to block in the sharp edges of our snow to work it around the exposed rock that we have, cut around all of those areas. Now I'm going to switch over to my smaller square headed brush, make sure that it's nice and damp. I'm going to take some titanium white, mix that in to our darker layer and create a highlight for the snow we just created. And I'm going to apply it on the sharper edges on the tops to begin with. And then I'm going to blend it down and back into that darker snow, but I'm going to leave little openings and divots to make it look like the snow is nice and three dimensional. And we can kind of line the bottom of some of these rocks and move it out into the ice a little bit. Have it connect out to these little rocks, create little patches of it. Now those little rocks have almost a pure titanium white, so we're going to need to balance it by making the snow here in the foreground a little bit brighter so that it all connects. So I'm just taking some extra bright snow pigment and working that over everything yet again. Now that we're done our snow, we are going to begin working on our trees right here. So I'm going to take my medium sized square headed brush, make sure that it is nice and damp. Then I'm going to create a very desaturated brown, similar to that of the rocks for our trees. So I'm starting with some burnt umber, some Mars black, and then I'll grab a bit of titanium white as well to make sure that it's nice and thick. Now here I can see it's a little bit brighter than that, so I'll make it just a hint darker with some extra Mars black. 
And then I'm going to start drawing in my trees. I like to start on the edges when I have the most paint and the most control with my brush. The light is coming this way in the painting, so we're going to add a little bit of a highlight to just the larger edges of the tree by taking some extra burnt umber with our smaller square headed brush, a little bit of extra titanium white, mixing up something that's a little bit brighter than what we've been using, but still very gray. And I'm going to run this along the edge of the tree that's going to be receiving light. I'm going to be doing it with a little bit of a tapping motion to create the effect of some bark in there. And again, I'm not going to do this for all of the tree, just the larger areas that really could catch light. So now that our trees are dry here, we can begin adding some snow to them. I'm going to do so with the smaller square headed brush. Here I'm going to take some primary blue, a good amount of titanium white, and a hint of Mars black, and create a snow color fairly similar to what we did down here. So I'm using this as a bit of a reference point. Don't want it to be too, too bright, but I do want it to be one of the brighter colors in the painting thus far. We can start with this and just kind of see how it goes. And I'm going to start by applying snow in the crevices of the tree. So these little V shapes that it makes with the larger branches. And that way it looks like the snow is kind of piling in these areas. I'm also using the corner of the square headed brush here when I want to make it truly small. And I'm just letting it kind of glide over so eventually, occasionally, I get this little pitter patter effect where again it isn't lining the entire edge, it's kind of coming up and going back down. And I'm just following all of these little branches that I've created here. Wonderful. Now we'll head over to our other tree and do more of the same. So I'm going to mix up a little bit more paint before we start just so that we have a good amount and you know we don't have to go back and remix and maybe accidentally use two different colors or tones. So here I'm just mixing up a little bit of it. Make sure my brush is nice and damp, that way I can create those very clean lines. I'll start again in the joints of my tree, as again that's where it will tend to end up predominantly. Remember it's all about subtlety. Using a very minimal amount of pressure on your brush, following the tops of your previously placed branches, and occasionally, if necessary, creating new ones. Anyways, there we have it. That is today's hour-long cut-up lesson thing. As per usual, I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you feel like you've learned something. If you'd like to learn more, there is a link in the description to my Patreon where you can find the full uncut hour-long version of this lesson along with the digital sketch to help you with that drawing process. You can also find over 50 other hour-long lessons there, as well as reference photos and one-on-one -on -one video critiques as well. So if you're interested in any of that, go check it out. It's also just a great way to help support the channel. I'd also like to note that if you are new to acrylic painting, if you're just trying to learn everything you can as fast as you can, you can also find my ebook, Acrylics for Beginners, in the description as well. In it, we talk about everything you need to know before you jump into your first acrylic painting. We talk about what brushes to use, how to blend your paints, how to work with water, how to ensure that your paint stays wet longer so that you can blend with it longer so that you get to tackle those really tricky areas. So all of that, again, link in the description. You can also find my ebooks, Painting Prompts 1 and Painting Prompts 2. These are great for people who find that they have artist block frequently. They are essentially two ebooks with 21 digital sketches in them for days where you want to create something, you want to make something, you want to get better at the craft of painting, but you just, you don't know what to paint, you don't have any ideas. With these, you just pick an image, you transfer it to canvas using the grid lines or other means, and then from there, you just start painting. So it really speeds up the process and it ensures that you paint so much more frequently and just get better at the craft. 
So if you're interested in any of that, there are the links in the description down below. I post twice a week, every week, so hit that subscribe button, hit that bell button, and I'd like to end this video on one very important note, and that is while acrylic paints are incredibly fun to work with, while they can be very relaxing, Sometimes they can also be a little bit complicated. So if you have any questions at all, please leave me a comment in the comments down below. I am here, I am happy to help, and I'm happy to have that conversation with you and just make your paintings as good as they can be. So with that said, I will see you very soon with a new acrylic lesson. Thank you so much for stopping by. And above all, as always, stay creative.